Welcome back uh, to the lecture on Holden model. Uh, so, we were uh, discussing that uh, whether graphene can become a topological insulator. Uh, we have uh, seen that there are six Dirac points uh, at which the conduction band and the valence band they touch each other and um, whether opening up of a gap there at those Dirac points can make it a topological insulator. And uh, while doing that, uh, we had two options because we found out that there are uh, two symmetries that um, crucially uh, defend or rather protect those uh, Dirac points and they are the uh, sort of inversion symmetry or the sublattice symmetry and as well as the uh, time reversal symmetry. So, we first tried uh, breaking the inversion symmetry that is um, quite possible or physically realizable uh, if we do not consider graphene, but consider say hexagonal boron nitride where the carbon atoms at the A and B sublattice sites would be replaced by boron and nitrogen and uh, that would constitute a different um, uh, chemical potential or different energies on site energies to the carbon atoms and which would sit at the in the Dirac Hamiltonian they will sit at the diagonal elements and that would definitely open up a gap. But uh, just opening up of a gap uh, is not good enough to get a topological insulator. One has to also get the edge modes um, associated with it. And the edge modes uh, can be found out by looking at uh, the uh, ribbon geometries, uh, the semi infinite geometries, because uh, you need to have edges in order to see the edge modes. Uh, and um, while doing that, we have seen that uh, the uh, merely breaking the inversion symmetry uh, does open up a gap, but it does not give you a topological insulator. Whereas, the Holden's conjecture or uh, his suggestion of opening up of a gap by breaking the time reversal symmetry, uh, which he did by uh, introducing a second neighbor complex uh, hopping. And um, uh, these have uh, chiral nature, which means that uh, whether uh, the hopping occurs um, uh, clockwise or anticlockwise, they would appear with different signs. Uh, such uh, a scenario would uh, break the time reversal symmetry and uh, give rise to a topological insulator, and which we have seen that uh, merely the uh, the Semenov insulator, which is uh, obtained by breaking the the inversion symmetry. Uh, does not have edge modes while uh, these ones the Holden insulators have. Okay. So, this is just a reminder slide this uh, was discussed in the last uh, lecture as well. Uh, you see that uh, these um, the honeycomb unit cell and the second neighbor hoppings are shown um, the clockwise and the anticlockwise hoppings are shown uh, and these appear with uh, a complex phase. And if you really want to understand that uh, if uh, this is equivalent to uh, such as there is a magnetic field there present because of this breaking of time reversal symmetry, uh, then uh, there is a flux uh, uh, phi at each of these corner atoms and uh, there is a, a flux minus 6 uh, phi um, that is there in the at the middle and that is the flux orientation of this Holden model. And um, then there are these uh, uh, in the lower figure here uh, one uh, sees the uh, basically the Brillouin zone and um, in fact uh, one has to be careful that if you write down the real space uh, uh, such as this like a conical shape at the top then the Brillouin zone is like this. So, this is real space and this is the momentum space of the Brillouin zone and uh, it is just the opposite. So, if this is the real space structure then the in the momentum space it looks like this. So, it is a hexagon the Brillouin zone the first Brillouin zone is a hexagon, but uh, they sort of uh, I mean there is the pointed head uh, becomes a flat head and the flat head becomes a pointed head and so on and so forth. Okay. And uh, the Dirac points are shown here uh, by k and k prime and these have been 
uh, discussed very elaborately that there are six Dirac points but only two of them are independent and the rest four will depend upon these uh, by which are obtained uh, from these two by uh, the adding or subtracting the reciprocal lattice vector. Okay. So, uh, once again uh, sort of reminder of uh, what happened to uh, graphene when uh, we just simply break the inversion symmetry, uh, a gap opens up which you see here and this gap is uh, of the order of 2 m i where m i is the, the mass that one gives. So, the term such as m i sigma z has been uh, included in the Hamiltonian. So, at both the Dirac points, so this is one Dirac point. Uh, so, let us say this is k uh, and this is k prime. So, that is another Dirac point. And uh, then th there is a gap that opens up uniformly at these uh, two Dirac points and the energy gap at these uh, Dirac points are proportional to m i which means that uh, if m i is just a parameter if it increases. Uh, then the uh, the gap will increase as well. Uh, so, uh, this uh, m i is of course, uh, nothing but the chemical potential associated with the uh, a and b sub lattice sites which in graphene of course, is uh, not there because both are carbon atoms. Okay. And uh, we have done this calculation of uh, the edge modes in a semi infinite geometry and when I say semi infinite geometry, it, it means that um, it is not uh, infinite in both the directions, it is finite in the y direction and it is infinite in the x direction. And uh, uh, so, uh, in the x direction k x is a good quantum number and that is why uh, it is plotted as a function of k x. Uh, just a rescaling is done in order to you know uh, such that the Dirac points come at these two points which are uh, nice and symmetric about 0. And um, so, uh, there is no um, edge mode and this becomes a trivial insulator just like a band insulator or, or the insulator that one is uh, familiar with which has gap everywhere in the energy spectrum. And um, if one uh, breaks uh, the time reversal symmetry uh, what I mean here is that uh, one has both m i term. Uh, so, there is a chemical potential term uh, in, in the diagonal elements of the Hamiltonian and as well there is a time reversal symmetry breaking term induced by these. Uh, second neighbor complex second neighbor hopping ok. Uh, one can see that uh, I have shown you a, a simpler picture where uh, these um, edge modes can be calculated from uh, Hamiltonian finite size Hamiltonian. Uh, it has to be done numerically of course, but I have shown it on a unit cell how these uh, hoppings can be included. It has not been shown for uh, the Holden model which involves second neighbor complex hopping. Uh, in fact, purely imaginary hopping when uh, phi equal to pi by 2 and um, uh, so there one finds that there is a gap at the Dirac point just the gap that we have seen earlier, uh, but there is also a uh, edge mode that uh, gets split from the bulk and they cross the Fermi uh, level which is uh, denoted by the red dash dot line and um, uh, they cut at these uh, points which are uh, the green points um, and at the green points the uh, velocities are um, in opposite direction. So, the electrons in the u point would travel uh, from the right to left which is a blue curve and at the v point uh, they will travel from left to right. Okay. Uh, so, they are uh, moving uh, in opposite direction just like a highway that we have talked about um, when we actually talked about this uh, quantum hall insulator. This really uh, acts like a quantum hall insulator uh, with the edge modes there. The difference between that problem and this problem is that there was no translational invariance. So, there was no k vector that we could you know uh, write down. And um, so, the uh, calculations were difficult, uh, but um, once you know that there, there is a Hall signal uh, there that must be proportional or rather that is related to the, uh, the churn number which uh, is there for a time reversal uh, a system which has no time reversal symmetry. Okay. So, this system also has no time reversal symmetry, but has translational invariance and so that uh, at least uh, for the edge modes at least along the k x direction we have edge modes. Of course, when we calculated the band structure uh, we did it for an infinite system which means that uh, there are uh, these uh, uh, translational invariance both along x and along y.
Okay, so this clearly is a topological insulator or like a quantum Hall insulator. So, Holden model presents a case similar to quantum Hall system. This is the main, um, you know, inference from all these activities or all these exercises, all these derivations that we have been doing that uh, Holden model indeed presents a case that is uh, just like the uh, quantum Hall uh, insulator. Okay. So, uh, these are uh, the edge modes that are calculated and so on and uh, now uh, we need to understand uh, if there are edge modes in the system, uh, then there has to be a topological invariant and uh, in a quantum Hall system that topological invariant is nothing but the Hall quantization of the Hall plateaus which does not go away um, as long as the time reversal symmetry uh, remains broken. Okay. Uh, here of course, we can calculate quantities which are topological invariants and uh, from uh, the topological invariant we can arrive at uh, the quantum Hall uh, expression or quantum Hall uh, effect, quantum Hall plateaus. Uh, so, uh, for that uh, we need to calculate uh, the Berry curvature and uh, we have done this earlier the Berry curvature is, um, is defined by this omega capital omega which is defined as the twice of imaginary part of uh, del psi del k x and del psi del k y. So, that is the expectation value. So, this is like uh, uh, so del psi uh, so that is the wave function uh, corresponding to the Hamiltonian that we have written down earlier which has a tight binding term uh, plus uh, an inversion breaking term plus a Holden term. Okay. One can take a full tight binding form of that or one can take a low energy form of that whichever uh, suits your need, uh, but at least uh, these calculations will not have any uh, effect on that. Uh, one can take uh, a full tight binding though it becomes difficult analytically to handle a full tight binding um, energy spectrum. So, uh, this is uh, just the velocity. Uh, so, it is del psi del k x and del psi del k y are the velocities are related to the velocities. Uh, k x and k y are the components of the wave vector k. Uh, so, uh, this is k x and k y. So, one has to take this overlap something like v x v y overlap and take the imaginary part of that and then uh, calculate or rather and multiply it by 2 and so on. Okay. So, uh, how do we do it on a lattice? Okay. This uh, had been talked about earlier, but uh, the, the simplest way to do uh, it is the way we have learnt a differentiation or taking derivatives uh, at the uh, high school level or uh, the first year college level. Uh, so, we take a del psi del k x as psi uh, k x plus uh, delta x which is some uh, small quantity in the k x direction. Uh, the x actually signifies that is taken along the x direction keeping k y to be constant and also taking another. So, so this is like a midpoint formula. Uh, so, it is used a k x minus delta x and k y uh, keeping k y to be constant and then you divide it by 2 delta x. This is slightly better than just using k x plus delta x and then psi k x and k y. Um, so, that is just uh, you know uh, just a forward difference formula and this is like a, a central difference formula. So, th there is a division by 2 delta x and similar things have been done for uh, the k y. So, del psi del k y is uh, psi k x k y plus delta y minus of psi k x k y minus delta y divided by 2 delta y. So, one uh, the Brillouin zone which I will discuss in a while let me just show with a square Brillouin zone for a moment for uh, convenience. So, this is k x minus the uh, actual Brillouin zone for graphene is not uh, square, but it is uh, hexagonal, but uh, we, j we just show it uh, just to illustrate this point. Uh, we are uh, showing it by a square. So, let me discretize both k x and k y. Okay, so, right now I am just discretizing k y. Never mind if they are not equidistant, they need to be equidistant 
that is just a freehand drawing problem and uh, so these are uh, now I am discretizing uh, in the k x direction. Okay. Suppose you want to take a derivative at this point um, uh, for del psi del k x then uh, one has to go uh, a k x minus delta which is here and k x plus delta which is here. Uh, delta is uh, completely in your control that is if you want to make the mesh to be thinner that is uh, uh, they are close to each other these lines are close to each other then one can uh, do it it just adds to the computational time. So, uh, so this this point is uh, uh, k x plus delta x and this point is uh, k x minus delta x and similarly uh, so this this point is k y plus delta y and this point is k y minus delta y ok. Uh, so, at every point there is a, a k x and k y and uh, if one is talking about an infinite system then it is uh, uh, formed in the uh, so these there is a periodic boundary condition. So, uh, these thing is rolled in the uh, x direction as well as it is rolled in the y direction. So, it becomes a torus and then one can uh, calculate these uh, derivatives at each of the points and store them and then uh, you know take the overlap of this and then take the imaginary part. This is what uh, needs to be done. It is uh, not so uh, difficult, but it is an elaborate numerical procedure that one has to follow. Okay. And uh, uh, for understanding uh, the topological invariant, this part is must, uh, one has to do it. I am sort of trying to give as much details as possible. So, uh, by putting all these quantities that you see del psi del k x del psi del k y and all that, uh, then actually one has uh, these overlap that needs to be calculated. Uh, we are uh, neglecting the two imaginary part of that. Uh, once you do the calculation, a twice of imaginary part has to be taken and this uh, corresponds to four terms which are k x plus delta k delta x and k y k x and k y plus delta y and so on. All these things the wave functions at those points are known because psi of k is known because h of k is known. The Hamiltonian is known, the uh, energy eigenvalues are known, the eigenvectors are known and here we are precisely talking about the eigenvector psi as a function of k x and k y at every point in the Brillouin zone. So, at all uh, k x k y in the first Brillouin zone. Uh, usually Brillouin zone is written in short uh, by BZ. Uh, so, uh, once you know everything at all those uh, uh, kx, ky uh, values then one can calculate these uh, quantities, these overlap quantities. These are nothing but um, they are column vectors and row vectors. So, these are multiplication of uh, vectors like this and vectors like this. Okay? Uh, so, a psi psi is like this. So, there are these entries here and there are these entries here and one actually takes the inner product. So, this is called as an inner product and um, uh, or the scalar product it is also called as a scalar product and then um, you know just like let me show you this. So, it is a so C D. So, this is equal to A C plus B D. Okay, and that is how. So, this element the 1 1 element and the 2 2 element etcetera etcetera will be all uh, taken together and then um, they are added and so on. Okay. So, this is how uh, the inner product can be calculated uh, which appears in this expression of the Berry curvature. And once when uh, one does that uh, one gets a Berry curvature which is the plot is presented on the right side of the screen. Uh, it is in the k x k y plane and you can clearly see uh, the 6 Dirac points on your uh, panel or on the screen and these um, the Berry curvature has maximum weight at these points. I mean the magnitude is largest at this point the red color is actually a large value and large negative value 
and uh, as you move away from those uh, Dirac points, uh, uh, the value diminishes to 0 or rather uh, you know the magnitude of the thing uh, goes down to 0 uh, of the Berry curvature and uh, one can actually calculate um, by uh, the prescription that we have talked about, we can one can talk about the Berry curvature analytically around these uh, Dirac points and uh, from a low energy Hamiltonian it is easy to calculate and uh, this is given by uh, these uh, expression. Uh, so, omega as a function of q, this q is nothing but uh, q x q y and uh, if you want to know what is q x and q y. So, q uh, vector is equal to k vector minus this Dirac points okay, uh, which is written with uh, with the capital uh, k either uh, you know uh, you can write a k or a k prime it does not ma matter. Uh, so, uh, these are uh, the q vectors which are which appear here q x and a q y where v f is the velocity which is uh, it has some value which is like uh, 3 by 2 a into t. So, it is a Fermi velocity, uh, it has a value 3 a t by 2 ok, t is the hopping ok and a is the, the nearest neighbor distance between the carbon atoms which is like 1.46 angstrom, t is uh, something that is given and so on. So, uh, a form for this low energy um, uh, version of this omega or the Berry curvature it sort of clarifies the fact that it is maximum around the, uh, the k points and the k prime points as uh, one can actually check by putting q x and q y equal to 0 which are the points the Dirac points ok. And beta is just a parameter which is minus 3 root 3 t 2 this, this actually plays an important role. In fact, um, uh, the gap the energy gap at the Dirac points uh, that is proportional to uh, this quantity beta. So, uh, the value of omega diminishes as one goes away from this point ok. And remember that we are uh, saying that the Berry curvature is negative and uh, that is why um, it is uh, the red is actually large and negative and blue is nearly equal to 0. So, as you shift away from the, uh, the Dirac points uh, one has a diminishing uh, Berry curvature which means uh, uh, the Berry curvature goes to 0 uh, at all other points excepting the 6 Dirac points. And uh, just to remind you that uh, these uh, Berry curvature will help us in calculating the topological invariant which is nothing but the churn number here. And that is why these uh, Holden insulators are called as a churn insulators because they have uh, churn number not equal to 0. And how do we get this uh, topological invariant or the churn number? You simply need to integrate this uh, omega of q uh, over the entire Brillouin zone ok. Um, and it is a question that uh, how a low energy uh, form can be integrated to get the sort of value of the topological invariant when you actually sum over the entire uh, Brillouin zone when you are not restricting yourself to small k. But uh, this again as you see that uh, the whole Brillouin zone from say minus pi to plus pi uh, for both kx and ky you see a square Brillouin zone will just uh, quickly will come to that uh, in just a few moments from now. It is actually a square uh, Brillouin zone that needs to be considered, I uh, will tell you how. Uh, but you see that there is blue everywhere which means uh, the Berry curvature is uh, identically equal to 0 at all points in the Brillouin zone excepting the 6 Dirac points where the low energy Hamiltonian works and where these uh, low energy Berry curvature or rather the Berry curvature near the Dirac points are the main contributors to uh, this, uh, this topological invariant and that is why it works ok. So, uh, we need to integrate uh, this Berry curvature in the first Brillouin zone to get a churn number and the churn number is uh, it is also written with uh, C or nu. Ok, um, because when you put it uh, in the expression for the Hall conductivity then it is often written with a nu. So, uh, make no mistake that uh, these, these are same quantities and we are just simply calculating the Berry curvature. Uh, the definition of the churn number is uh, the Berry curvature here uh, which is being integrated uh, from uh, you know 
uh, over the Brill 1 zone. I have not specified what Brill 1 zone is, but this is often written as uh, a, a D2K, okay? just that uh, one can uh, sort of find out the Brill 1 zone and this and then there is a sum over or rather this uh, normalization factor 1 over 2 pi and uh, this is nothing but for a square Brill 1 zone this is dkx dky. So, the churn number has to be calculated because the churn number would give us Hall conductivity will tell us about the whether you know for what parameter values uh, this is uh, the model is topological and for what parameter values they are trivial the model represents uh, trivial phase trivial insulating phase we have to see that ok. So, uh, the question is uh, how to deal with a hexagonal Brill 1 zone. Now, you see that there is a hexagonal Brill 1 zone, um, there is nothing wrong with that excepting the fact that if you are trying to integrate something, then for this part kx and ky are related by some linear equation. So, uh, you cannot take kx and ky uh, independently uh, and do the integral, but uh, you can do that if it is a square Brill 1 zone. Okay? Uh, so, what you do is that uh, you, you take this, um, this part and then you take this part and you take uh, this part here and find out that you know there is a exact reciprocal lattice vector that maps each point on this part that is uh, let us call that part as some A, B, C, uh, D, E, F, G, H and let us also do it here I and uh, this is like ok. So, it is all there ok. So, uh, what we do is that so each point from this A, B, C uh, can be mapped onto EFG and uh, this whole thing can be translated here and now you no longer have this part, uh, this part is not there and uh, you have only this part ok. So, I am crossing it out, this is not there ok. And similarly what one can do is that each point here can be mapped onto here and um, again you do not have this thing anymore and all of them come here. So, the resultant Brill 1 zone uh, becomes uh, a rectangle where uh, kx goes from 2 pi by 3 root 3 to 4 pi by 3 root 3 and uh, this goes from minus 2 pi by 3 to plus 2 pi by 3. So, it is not a square Brill 1 zone, but uh, it is still a rectangle Brill 1 zone where there is no straight path where kx depends on ky. So, kx and ky integrals can be done uh, independent of each other and which is a big uh, a positive thing uh, as far as the numerical integration goes because uh, if there are regions where you need to uh, do uh, a parametric um, integration that is uh, one of the variables depend on the other variable and you need to know the, uh, the exact uh, equation of the line. Of course, here it is very easy to find out but there could be more difficult cases in some in a different uh, Brill 1 zone, uh, but such a, a nice um, you know a mapping if it is uh, possible then of course, make everything becomes uh, uh, very smooth. So, this is how one deals with uh, a hexagonal Brill 1 zone. So, uh, the Brill 1 zone is uh, uh, from a hexagon it becomes, so this is a hexagon and it becomes a rectangle. and this rectangle has uh, all these cakes from, uh, so this is from uh, 2 pi by uh, 3 root 3 uh, to 4 pi by 3 root 3 and a k y uh, is minus 2 pi by 3 to 2 pi by 3 plus 2 pi by 3 ok. So, uh, one can do an integral uh, of this things uh, of the Berry curvature in this uh, rectangular Brill 1 zone and that will be uh, sufficient for that. But we still have a problem that how do we do a double integral? Doing a double integral is uh, difficult than of course, doing a single integral, but then uh, all of you must have gone through some course on 
multivariable calculus in which there are two um, here of course there are independent variables and uh, uh, you have to do it uh, not uh, in the integration is not over a line uh, or over a contour uh, but it is uh, in this entire you know the rectangular uh, place that you see here and uh, one needs to discretize it um, as per your wish that uh, whether if you want those uh, you know the boxes to be uh, very small that is uh, the vertical and the horizontal lines to be very close to each other uh, then uh, the results of the integration uh, will be much better in the sense that there will be much less error whereas um, having them far apart or uh, widely spaced you will have to compromise on the accuracy of the results. Nevertheless, uh, so you have to uh, integrate this box that you see here uh, in the x direction it has to be integrated from a to b and there are 5 uh, you know divisions being done in between that is uh, there are in total you know there are uh, 1 division, 2 division, 3, 4, 5, 6. And similarly from C to D there are 4 divisions being done 1, 2, 3, 4 ok. You can do more divisions but just to show that uh, there is a uh, because your uh, Brillouin zone that one has seen here is not squarish that is why this uh, um, example is taken where uh, the x had 6 uh, intervals and where the y has uh, 4 intervals and so on. So, uh, one uses a formula I mean finally an integration is nothing but it is uh, sum over all these things uh, all the, this function whichever function you are integrating that function you have to find here that you have to find here you have to find here here and so on and then uh, there's those functions have to be uh, there has to be a discrete sum of those functions. Uh, for the integration to be carried out. This is the function uh, I mean for our case that is the very curvature that needs to be integrated and um, uh, there are these i equal to 0 to n minus 1 if you take 1 from 1 then it becomes goes to n or if you take it from 0 then it goes to n minus 1 and so on and there are these m n intervals like the, we show that there are uh, 6 intervals into 4 intervals. So, m and n are like respectively 6 and 4 and so on so forth and uh, b minus a is the x interval and d minus c is the y interval and then uh, one can actually take this quantity and multiply uh, the function that is a Berry curvature by this b minus a divided by m and uh, d minus c divided by n ok. So, where n and m are respectively those uh, divisions um, uh, in the Brillouin zone are taken uh, in the x and y directions. And then finally, we can calculate this by using this formula where delta x is nothing but b minus a by m and delta y is nothing but this ok. That is that is exactly what has been shown and uh, this integration can be done with a variety of methods I mean one has trapezoidal rule. Uh, this is mostly like what I am showing is a trapezoidal rule and so on. Um, there are other integration methods such as Simpson's one third rule or three eighth rule uh, they all can be implied or rather uh, they can be implemented and it is just a formula will be uh, different and so on. And then uh, one uh, gets this phase diagram which is what I have shown you in the first slide itself if you remember that uh, this is a known result which we are calculating step by step uh, that is by calculating the uh, topological invariant that is a Berry curvature and then from the Berry curvature one calculates by uh, summing it over or integrating it over the entire Brillouin zone uh, one actually gets um, the churn number phase diagram this is exactly the same phase diagram. So, this is equal to a uh, minus 1 churn number and this is equal to plus 1 ok. And uh, the white region all around everywhere you see a white region that is a, a trivial insulator with c equal to 0. So, churn number equal to 0 ok. Uh, so, only the finite values of the churn number and of course, the churn number only takes integer values. And uh, this churn number is nothing but uh, similar to the genus of a geometrical object which means an opening or the number of holes. Uh, so, this uh, is uh, 1 or minus 1 you can take it as a finite uh, churn number is um, uh, similar to or rather it implies the 
topological insulator and c equal to 0 is uh, the trivial insulator. So, uh, what is the space that it is drawn this delta? Delta is this uh, a term which is uh, you know the, the semen of mass plus uh, this thing which uh, was probably written as m uh, mh and a uh, plus minus mi and so on. So, uh, these are uh, the combination of the Holden masses which are coming from the second uh, neighbor complex hopping and uh, this is the semen of term the mi and uh, so these are the plus minus sign actually uh, denote the two uh, Dirac points ok and this is the Holden flux. Now, we had initially taken for the Holden model uh, the phi equal to pi by 2 because we wanted to take a uh, completely imaginary hopping uh, because uh, that uh, breaks the time reversal symmetry. Uh, but at all other values of phi this uh, phase diagram is calculated for the two parameters that it has one is a delta and the other is a phi and it is from minus pi to plus pi and then uh, this is uh, delta goes from minus 6 to plus 6 and then you see that there are these lobes these are called as a churn lobes. Okay. So, uh, the one gets two churn lobes uh, with uh, you know values of churn number which is not equal to 0 and uh, the region which is uh, trivial is uh, given by c equal to 0. So, all the white region in the parameter space spanned by delta and uh, phi. Uh, remember delta is actually scaled by this T 2 which is the second amplitude of the second neighbor hopping ok. So, that is delta by T 2 and then phi is of course, a dimensionless quantity that is uh, appears in the phase of the complex hopping term ok. So, uh, there is uh, there exists a semi metallic phase between the trivial and the non trivial uh, regime in the phase diagram. So, uh, if you notice that there is a purple curve here. So, this is where I am sort of uh, putting my pencil into. Uh, so, this is that purple curve is actually a semi metallic uh, region where uh, it uh, sort of uh, you know separates the c equal to 1 or c equal to minus 1 regions to the c equal to 0 region. So, this that is a boundary of the uh, topological to trivial. Uh, phase and we know that this is actually a uh, the system undergoes when it uh, undergoes a transition from a topological phase to a trivial phase it undergoes through a gap closing transition and that gap closing transition we are calling it as a uh, semi metallic phase we can write a gap closing ok. And uh, so, this is there and then of course, you see that there is a point here which is of course, uh, where uh, the phase diagram shrinks to 0 and um, if you want to know what is the equation of the curve that also can be found out and th this is the equation of the curve. Uh, so, there is a sin phi dependence of that. So, there is a sinusoidal dependence on the phi which is there in the x axis along with some uh, you know trivial. Um, amplitude term or some coefficient term. Uh, so, uh, this term 3 root 3 is multiplied by T 2 that represents the magnitude of the half energy gap when phi equal to pi by 2. So, what is the uh, magnitude of the half energy gap? Let me show you this figure. Uh, so, this is that gap that we are talking about ok. So, this is the gap and the half of this gap is uh, that 3 root 3 uh, T 2. Okay. Um, and of course, that corresponds to phi equal to pi by 2 okay, because we have done the calculations for the Holden model at phi equal to pi by 2. So, uh, at phi equal to pi by 2 if we keep uh, the delta to be like this then the gap at the k point one of the Dirac point closes and the system becomes a semi metal. But of course, remember that uh, the gap does not close at both the k points simultaneously at one of the k points it closes and uh, the system becomes a semi metal. So, there is a gap closing transition that occurs and again for this value that is when uh, delta exceeds this 3 root 3 T 2 uh, the gap opens up again and the system becomes a true trivial insulator. I mean this is this insulator is a trivial insulator 
okay and uh, for another value of uh, for a negative value of delta the gap the reverse happens i mean that is the reverse at the other valley happens okay so this by and large you know the the physics of the holden model that the holden model denotes a topological phase for certain values of the parameters defined by the delta uh, and phi uh, delta is of course here scaled with uh, t2 the amplitude of the complex second neighbor hopping but um, uh, it has a non trivial phase and since it has a non trivial phase uh, there has to be a hall conductivity associated with it now this is the uh, uh, nice thing about this problem and in which um, holden in its seminal paper in 1988 he mentioned that uh, one can actually get this quantum hall effect uh, without requiring uh, Landau levels. There are no Landau levels, but the time reversal symmetry is broken. So, magnetic field uh, is not the main thing. Uh, Landau levels are not the main thing. The main thing about is to break the time reversal symmetry, where this is very, very fundamental to all materials that if you uh, want to see um, the quantum Hall effect, uh, then uh, time reversal symmetry needs to be broken. Uh, and, and that would uh, eventually translate into a phase with non-zero churn number and this churn number is the one that sits just in front of the E square by H for the whole conductivity and this is exactly what we would get. So, uh, just a slide on uh, this anomalous quantum Hall effect and why it is called anomalous. The word anomalous is important because there is no magnetic field. Okay? And uh, so, uh, that is why without a magnetic field you still can have quantum Hall effect. This was not known uh, prior to you know the Holden model and, and so on. You know, in, in it is called AQHE and of course, there are different ferromagnetic materials where there is a intrinsic magnetization uh, which um, that breaks the time reversal symmetry anyway. So, uh, this anomalous version of the quantum Hall effect is a Hall effect uh, without not with it is without an external magnetic field. So, it is Hall effect without magnetic field. Uh, this is exactly an example of Hall effect without Landau levels and it is um, experimentally observed and around uh, between 2013 to 2016-17 there are a number of substances that one had seen. Uh, for example, this chromium based um, uh, bismuth, chromium bismuth antimony and uh, telluride this is a TE3 uh, that uh, shows these uh, anomalous uh, quantum Hall effect. And uh, here uh, as opposed to the, uh, the quantum Hall effect that we have studied in presence of a magnetic field where there are number of plateaus and this uh, new actually is an integer uh, for each one of the plateaus such as 1, 2, 3, etc. Here there is just one plateau that will be observed. Nevertheless, because of this uh, similarity of there is no time reversal invariance, the whole conductivity is given by this new E square over H. E square over H is nothing but this is the uh, unit of uh, conductivity. It has a dimension of a uh, more familiar quantity is this which has a 25.8 kilo ohm has been discussed a number of time and it is used as a metrology um, and uh, it is not a microscopic system, but the microscopic parameters such as H and E they put together define the unit of resistance. Okay? And uh, so, sigma x y equal to uh, nu E square over H and this nu is nothing but the churn number. This is what I said earlier that uh, you, one can and there is a more familiar form that is why I have written it here, but it is nothing but the C E square over H. So, this is nothing but the C which is known as a churn number and uh, one can actually get this um, anomalous Hall conductivity as a function of uh, the Fermi energy. Now, this is important. Uh, this Fermi energy is nothing but the bias voltage. Okay? So, this is the biasing energy or the Fermi energy or bias voltage and so on. So, it is like E V kind of voltage. Okay? So, what you do is that when you connect a system uh, to a battery, 
uh, that is you are uh, driving the system, you are pumping electrons into the system, uh, the Fermi energy shifts. So, uh, this Fermi energy uh, shifts from say we have taken um, uh, symmetrically about 0 from minus 1.5 uh, to plus 1.5 and uh, just to make it dimensionless we have uh, divided it by uh, the single particle hopping the nearest neighbor hopping uh, which is uh, has some value ok. So, T has some value and so on 2.7 electron volt etc. etc. And then uh, one has uh, varied this and uh, one nicely sees a plateau at um, uh, e square over h. So, is 1 times sigma 0 where sigma 0 is nothing but e square over h. Um, so, there is a plateau there uh, very interestingly you know this plateau is uh, well, I tried to make it as straight as it can, but it is probably not straight enough. Uh, in any case, uh, this uh, is the energy gap uh, that you saw on the band structure. So, the width of the plateau is uh, proportional to the, uh, the energy gap in the dispersion spectrum, okay, equal to the band gap in the dispersion spectrum. And uh, if you somehow do a band engineering and reduce this gap, the gap this gap I am talking about which is what I had shown you this gap. Somehow if you can tune this by doing something to the crystal structure, uh, then uh, this uh, plateau width also will decrease or increase depending upon how you change it. Okay. So, one actually has um, a nice correlation between these width of the plateau to uh, the energy gap in the spectrum and um, uh, so this way is something very interesting that as the Fermi energy uh, that uh, lies in the bulk gap that is this gap that I talked about this as the Fermi energy lies in the bulk gap that is between this point to this point one has the plateau. Okay. And as you are changing the Fermi energy suppose you lift it and put it inside the bulk uh, then uh, of course, uh, these uh, plateau will uh, you know come down. I mean if you take uh, one side of it then uh, so uh, it is uh, the uh, you know the number of uh, occupied energy level. Okay. So, I I if it goes somewhere here. Um, then uh, of course, the number of uh, energy level will now increase and uh, these Hall uh, conductivity will go down this is what this uh, going down is shown here. Okay. So, this this going down uh, I mean one side uh, so it is actually uh, pretty symmetric about uh, 0 uh, not so much with this I, I think I should need to do it. Uh, neatly, but anyway it is more or less symmetric. Uh, so, uh, as long as the Fermi energy is within the bulk gap uh, the plateau exists and that is how uh, the this is proportional to the bulk gap. Okay. Uh, so, this width is proportional to the bulk gap. Okay. And uh, as the Fermi energy enters uh, one of the conduction band or the valence band, uh, then it, it starts falling off because the number of uh, um, you know occupied states will change and that is how it uh, sort of falls off. Okay. Uh, so, as the Fermi energy goes um, away means uh, into one of the conduction of the valence band depending on how you are changing it. Uh, then the, this uh, gradually decreases and uh, at a very large uh, biasing energy or the Fermi energy being very large it will be either completely inside the uh, conduction band or uh, deep into the valence band and then of course, there is no Hall conductivity. So, it needs to stay within uh, the bulk gap in order to have this and that is how it measures uh, the, uh, the spectral gap in the band structure. Okay. This uh, pretty much uh, all about uh, Holden model and how uh, starting from graphene uh, we can get a hint of topological insulator. So, uh, this really acts like um, quantum Hall sample uh, with uh, Hall conductivity 
um, and this is the anomalous hall conductivity uh, with, with a single plateau and this plateau is uh, similar to the plateaus that we have seen uh, for the quantum hall effect in a 2D electron gas but of course there are different plateaus and so on and here of course we have uh, one uh, plateau and uh, this plateau occurs at uh, this value of E square over H. Okay. So, uh, we do not need any Landau levels in order to see this quantum hall effect and it is truly it's a very similar uh, quantum hall response of the system uh, and uh, the only similarity between this magnetic field in presence of an external uh, I mean the 2D electron gas in presence of an external magnetic field is just similar to having a honeycomb structure with complex second neighbor hopping and um, both of them have uh, the churn number not equal to 0 and uh, whenever the churn number is not equal to 0 then one has uh, the topological insulator. So, this is a the classic example of uh, how uh, you know uh, gaps can be uh, created and um, it is not only the bulk gap, but there has to be also along with uh, the edge states or the edge modes that would traverse the Fermi energy. So, it will traverse from the conduction band to the valence band here. You see these are splitting from this let me show you with the color. So, these are the this things which are splitting the states which are splitting and they would give rise to conduction. Okay. The bulk is insulating it has no conducting property just like a plastic material which has no conducting properties, but this would uh, give rise to conductivity and would give rise to various uh, you know things about I mean uh, that would uh, be like those quantum hall samples that we have studied uh, earlier that there are edge modes where it conducts and like this and here it is an insulator. it is an insulator here okay. and uh, that that is exactly the bulk is insulating here as well you see that the blue bands are too far away and uh, they are like the bulk of this sample here and uh, the edges are conducting and that is the main ingredient of a topological insulator. So, uh, we will stop here for now and then uh, carry on with another kind of topological insulator uh, which occurs in presence of uh, time reversal symmetry and these are called as a quantum spin hall insulators which would not have any churn number, uh, but will have um, you know uh, another invariant called as the Z2 invariant. And, uh, that would be uh, discussed in the context of uh, this uh, quantum spin hall phase which is uh, distinct than the uh, quantum hall phase that we have discussed for so long. So, thank you for your attention.